Welcome to Legacy Church. It's great to have you with us online this morning. We're going to have an exciting Sunday. We're believing for great things. My name is Grayson Jones. I'm the senior pastor of Legacy Church. This is my wife, Dell, and we leave the church here. If this is your first time with us, we really want you to engage. We want you to connect. We're so glad that you've joined with us. It's going to be a great morning. dell has got something to share as we just think about where we go in this morning. Morning guys, um, I've just been thinking, you know, this week with everything, there's been so much different news every day, so it's, things are changing and it's uncertain times for us all right now and, and people are in confusion in, in so many different ways. But I just want to read this to you and it's, it's a psalm and it's Psalm 46 and um, I'm just going to read this and the, the words will be coming on the screen as well, but I just think it's it's pertinent for the times that we are living in today and it says this God you're such a safe and powerful place to find refuge you're a proven help in time of trouble more than enough and always available whenever I need you so we will never fear even if every structure of support were to crumble away we will not fear even when the earth quakes and shakes moving mountains and casting them into the sea for the raging roars, stormy winds and crashing waves cannot erode our faith in you. God as a constantly flowing river whose sparkling streams bring joy and delight to his people. His river flows right through the city of God most high into his holy dwelling places. God is in the midst of his cry, secure and never shaken. At, day at daybreak his help will be seen with the appearing of the dawn. When the nations are in uproar with their tottering kingdoms, God simply raises his voice yeah. and the truth, the earth begins to disintegrate before him. Here he comes, the commander, the mighty Lord of angel armies is on our side. The God of Jacob fights for us. Everyone look, come and see the breathtaking wonders of our God. For he brings both ruin and revival. He's the one who makes conflicts end throughout the earth, breaking and burning every weapon of war. Surrender your anxiety to him. Be silent. Stop your striving and you will see that I am God. I am the God above all the nations and I will be exalted throughout the whole earth. Here he stands the commander the mighty lord of angel armies is on our side the god of jacob fights for us i just want to pray before we we enter in this morning to the wonders of what god has got for us and um let's just give our hearts to him in prayer right now father we just thank you we thank you lord that you are in control of all things we thank you, Lord, as your word says, we don't need to be anxious. God, you have got us in the palms of your hand. And I just pray right now, Lord, for all the people that are watching this, Lord. I just pray for those that are feeling their fear, fear and anxious. Lord, I just pray for your peace that passes all understanding to just fill their hearts, fill the homes, Lord, around our nation, around our globe, Father. Fill homes with your peace. God, we just thank you. We give you all the glory this morning and every day of our lives. We just want to honour you. We want to give you your rightful place before we even begin, Lord. We give you your rightful place. Holy Spirit, just move amongst us across the globe, across Doncaster and Swansea right now in our campuses. Holy Spirit, move, we ask. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Fantastic. Listen. As you join in us this morning, I want you to realize that you are connected right across different stratas of society, different age groups, different people from all different walks of life. You might be sitting in your lounge or in your kitchen, you might be watching the TV or an iPad, it doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, we want to say to you, you're part of a community. Yeah. 
We love you, we value you. And even if you are coming for the first time to join us and you're just uh, just having a look at what's going on, we wanna to say to you, God cares yes. for you, he cares about you, and he cares about your family. Now on the right, si right hand side of your screen, you'll see a bar where you can comment even as we're talking, and there's somebody there to interact with you, somebody there to share. We want you to make sure that you put in your life questions or thoughts or anything about it, because Church is about us doing life together. It's not watching an event, it's being part of an encounter. And we really want to encourage you with that. Also, we want to say that if you've got a prayer needs, there's an icon where you can press at the bottom of the screen and you can press there and that'll come straight through to us. You can put your prayer needs. We've got people praying eight o'clock till eight o'clock every day. We pray in and believe in God because the Bible says that God answers mm -hmm. prayer and so as we go into our meeting today please interact with us get online hashtag yeah. legacy church and just make sure that everybody's connecting yeah. so that we together as a community of people are, are making this happen and god's word is going out and we're connecting together and mm -hmm. um, we just want to watch your screen right now but we're... yeah well, you are on the screen and um, we just want you to just look to see what's coming up we just want to put some fun things out there just to give us a laugh this morning yeah enjoy Layla yeah. Nando's is closed as well <coughs> we love Nando's <coughs> and KFC uh, and McDonald's our Chinese closed too. Chinese is closed too <coughs> All the deliveries. You've literally got to eat mummy's cooking now. A bizarre story of our times. After KFC runs out of chicken, the police are forced to warn people to stop calling. It's not an emergency. I've had to go to Burger King. Probably just like. Going out to eat. Oh my perfection, Lisey. You are so good. Oh my gosh, that's really good. No! 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 No, no way! Wait! No way! No way! Hey guys, how funny was that? Amazing. You know, it would be really, really good. We would love for you to send in if you've got any funny clips, anything that's going on in your home with your kids and with your family and little things that you, you know, you, you've, you've caught on camera. We'd love for you to email in to us. Even if you've got some um, fitness tips, cooking tips, and yeah, when you know those of you who are homeschooling, we'd love to know yeah, how you're doing it, doing so it. that we can we can put it out there for other people to to learn and 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 to know different ways. If we 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 you know we can all learn from each other and in different ways. So if you're going to do that, just send it into info at legacychurch.co.uk. That would be fantastic. Thank Great. you. Amazing. The other thing that we have done, we've got. Um, something if you are not part of a life group or a dinner party we want you to connect with us we want you to be part of a smaller community as much as we're doing this on a sunday which is us speaking to you and a bit of interaction what we want to do every wednesday every wednesday we're going to send out a video of a bit of a teaching and then we want to put people into uh, certain groups so they can have discussions across zoom or sometimes on whatsapp or whichever way we need to do it so that we can begin to think about what god wants for us yeah. and so at the top of your screen there's an icon 
that you can click and you can get in touch with us to give us your details make sure that you're part of a community mm -hmm. because during this time as much as it's great we can go on online online and see what people are doing we want to see people we interact with yeah. it's so much different talking to people than just being talked mm -hmm. at and tv is brilliant for just you know when you want that monologue to you but we want to engage with you yeah. find out how you are find out what's going on if you've got any needs let us know also if you go on our website web page at legacychurch.co.uk we've got there an eight to eight prayer thing that we're doing we believe in every day that we're going to get mm -hmm. uh, all our people praying yeah. and setting in motion by clicking on one of the icons there one time of the day where you're going to be praying now it's they're set in hourly blocks but we want to say to you even if you pray in 10 minutes a time yeah. we can pray together the more we pray the more god is able to yeah. do and it's not just praying for ourselves it's praying for our communities yes. praying for the older people who are amongst us praying yeah. for those who are isolated and are feeling yeah. lonely praying for those who are sick for all the different needs that we have and we want to pray that god is moving in this yeah. we know he's doing incredible things we believe in the power of prayer so if you want to go there you can commit to praying or you can put your prayer requests and see the things that we are putting up there mm -hmm. okay what i want to do now i want to talk about something really really important and that's our giving our generosity the bible encourages us continually to be generous yeah. as followers of jesus and as much as we can be looking at community and looking at the things that are going on around us constantly the bible encourages us that as followers of jesus we need to be people who bring our tithes and our offer offerings to the local church yeah. local church is still here we are still the local church we're still people gathered together we've got buildings to pay we've got things that we're committed to, missionaries that we're supporting, we've got salaries of staff, we've got all the different things that we're doing that are still happening. We're able to do this today and bring this to you because there's an army of people mm -hmm. serving, praying, working, sharing, developing things so that we can be the church. And we wanna be set up for where we're going. We don't wanna come out of this looking around thinking, God, we're, we're in a mess. The thing is, we've gotta rely on God's people to put God first. Mm -hmm. And I know all of us are feeling the pinch, all of us are maybe um, concerned about what's going on, but the Bible says that if we are people who sow, then we will reap. Listen to what it says. This is Paul writing to a church in similar situations where everything seemed to be going wrong. It's 2 Corinthians 8, verse, verses 1 to 4. He says, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Macedonia today is still uh, very vulnerable financially. In those days, it was the same. In the midst of a very severe trial, the overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. Paul here talking about this church that was under incredible pressure, but because it was a famine going on in Jerusalem and because he put out the call, he said, guys, stand with us, help us, support us. This church that was knowing poverty welled up in incredible generosity. And you know, generosity is a spirit. It's not something uh, of what we have, therefore we give. It's something that we want to do. Mm -hmm. And Paul writes to these and says, you know, guys, they give willingly out of their poverty, but they give richly. And in this time at Legacy Church, I want to encourage you, if you're part of Legacy Church, if you're, you're regular coming along, you should be a tither. You should be somebody who's committing to what we're doing. These are difficult days for all of us, but the Bible says to give 10% of everything that we get, and we want to encourage you to do that. If you are looking on today and you want to sow in, then we invite you to do that. Because um, we want to be a resource center. We want to help the word of God go forward. We want to make sure that we are helping people who are in need. But to do that, we need those who can to stand with us. And so I want to just encourage you with that, that you would join us with giving. And so right now, I'm going to pause because the, the ch church, to allow us to give, just for a little minute, I'm going to pause so that all of us can pause and think about what we're giving to God. 
It's not given to us. It's not given to a group of people. It's given to God. And we've made it super easy for you to give. All you need to do is when we pause, then click the top of the screens and you'll meet us right back here after you've done that. So you can do that right now on the top of your screens. You'll see the button there for giving. Hit that and then you can come back and hit play. And then we're going to be right back here. Okay, guys, thank you for your giving. We really do appreciate the yeah. fact that you have stood with us and that you've sown. Thank you, everybody, and we really do appreciate it. We just want to pray mm -hmm. and let's, let's just commit to God what we have given today. And even if you haven't given yet, you can do that later. Just make sure that you are doing what your heart moves you to do. Come on, let's pray together. Father, I want to thank you for every gift that's been given. I want to thank you for every seed that's been yes. sown into this ministry but more than that into your kingdom lord we thank you that you have asked us to be good stewards and in part of being stewards that we would share what you have given you've said that freely i have given freely you receive now go and give likewise you said that we're blessed to be a blessing and i pray that this offering would be given to your kingdom to serve yes, your god. people and the purposes mm. of god in the world to reach people with the gospel of jesus yes. christ for we ask it in jesus name Amen. 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 Okay, guys, we're going into a time of worship now, Fantastic. and our team are just going to lead us. So just get ready in your living rooms, in your kitchens, wherever you are, and let's just go for it in worship Absolutely and praise it. Jesus right now. Amen, and we'll see you soon. Good morning, ladies and church. It's so good to have you online with us yeah. this week again. You know what, I just really want to encourage you as we go into some worship right now. If you feel like you want to stand, if you feel like you want to sit, if you feel like you want to raise your hands, then let's do it, because right now we are lifting up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's do it. Let's
what it said in Isaiah um, 40, 28. It says, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow weary, tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and he increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, come on, will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And you know what, church? We have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ today. That he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And right now, wherever you are at, if you need healing in this place, if you need a, a touch from heaven, if you need your mind renewing right now, the peace and the strength of God can be with you. So, Father God, we just pray right now, Father, for anybody under the sound of my voice right now, Jesus, that needs a touch from you. Father God, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would just be with them right now, God. I pray for fear that it will be God. God, I pray, God, for anybody that needs healing in the body right now, Jesus, that you would just touch them. Father God, you would heal them right now, Jesus. And God, we just pray for your peace. God, to just resonate right in our hearts right now, Father. Jesus, we love you and we thank you so much for your beautiful presence, God.
What a great God we yeah, serve and really it's brilliant do. to worship him it's and so exalt good. who he is. So Listen, we got an amazing, amazing mm -hmm. message for you right now. Matt Boyle, our campus pastor mm -hmm. in Doncaster, is going to be speaking. He's going to be bringing a phenomenal mm -hmm. word. I want you to get your notepads, yeah. your iPhones, your iPads, whatever it is you take notes on. Yeah. And I would encourage you, even if you're not used to church, listen, this is a message that's going to be practical for you. Yes. It's going to apply to yes. you. And it's going to really help you in life. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to hand over to Matt and just enjoy this message. Yeah. Hey, good morning. It's so good to have you joining us uh, this morning, wherever you're watching. Uh, around Doncaster or Swansea or indeed the rest of the UK or maybe even beyond. Hey, we'd love to hear where you are watching from uh, this morning, but we just want you to know that wherever you're watching from, God knew that you'd be tuning in this morning. God knew where you would be at in this season of your life and he, he knew what words you'd be listening to this morning. And so I really want to welcome you because I think it's a real God thing that you're tuned in this morning, wherever you're watching from, from your living room, your bathroom, wherever it is, welcome. Um, I am filming right now from our kitchen at home. Uh, we're just making this up as we're going along, but we're just so excited about what God's doing right now, even amidst all of the challenges and the health issues and the, what, what's been called the crisis, we're still expecting that God knows what he's doing. He always has the last word. And so in faith, it, we're excited and we're so glad that you can join us uh, this morning. Hey, my name is Matt Boyle and I am the campus pastor of our Doncaster campus in South Yorkshire. Um, and we're a, we're a multi-site church. We meet in Swansea, the great city of Swansea in, in, in Wales. And we're just really believing for incredible things in the future. And so wherever you're watching from this morning, hey church, you are so, so welcome. Um, I just had a few thoughts that I want to share with you this morning. Um, I, I, I don't know if you've, um, if you've ever dreamed or maybe you've imagined something for your life that looks so different from where you are right now. Like coronavirus aside, self-isolation and quarantine aside, I don't know if you've ever seen the gap between what you hope for in your future and where you're at in life right now and, 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 and looked at the gap that's in between and think, is this gap as wide as it is frustrating? I don't know if you've ever wondered if things are ever going to change and, and maybe you're watching this morning and through different circumstances you've even th thought about throwing in the towel and moving on from this frustrating season that you might find yourself in. Listen, I believe that God's got a message for you this morning to help frame wherever you're at, whatever your situation looks like, to reframe that with hope. Listen to what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the famous love chapter. If you've ever been to a wedding, the pastor always speaks from this chapter. But from verse 13, here's what he says. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. I think it's quite apt that in the middle of those three things that remain, faith and love is hope. Because for me, hope is the in-between. It's grounded in reality, but it always looks forward with an anticipation and an expectation into the future. See, the Greek word for hope the Bible uses is completely different from the English words that we use. You see, when I say, oh, I hope Coventry City win this week, uh, I'm actually speaking with a lot of doubt. I'm actually speaking with uh, this thing of it might happen, it could happen, I wish it would happen, but there is a chance that it's not going to happen. Or there's the Bible kind of hope, which is very different from our understanding. You see, whenever the Bible talks about hope, it always talks about anticipation. 
It always talks with an expectation of seeing the good things that we hope for. I've got a little boy, his name's Xavier, and he's, he's 10 months old, and he is our alarm clock. Um, every morning he wakes us up before our alarm, um, our, our lay-ins, but I guess we're new parents, lay-ins for us now are like seven o'clock, and we're so thankful for that seven o'clock girl, as opposed to a six or a five. But, but when, when I hope that Xavier gets asleep, let's just compare the hope for a moment. I might hope, with our worldly understanding of what hope is, I hope that Xavier doesn't get up early this morning. I, I, I'm saying that with a fat chance, like because I know that's not going to happen. But let's just say that Xavier stops at one of his grandparents' house. I might say, I hope I don't wake up early in the morning. And I'm not saying that with any second guessing. I know I'm not going to wake up at that hour again. Because even if Xavier wakes up, he ain't my problem because he's with his grandparents. You see, hope is that time that we spend in between where we are and where we want to be. And many of you watching, you've spent your time in that in-between. I'm not where I want to be in, in life. I thought that I'd be married by now. I thought that I'd be in that kind of circumstance by now. And, and, and when we talk about hope, there's always that element of doubt. Is it going to happen? And it, it brings in that fear and it brings in that failure into that gap in the middle, the in-between. Much of our lives are spent in the in-between. Many, many of us are, are between our current reality and our anticipated future. And for some of you, it is exactly that. You're, you're waiting with that longing to be married or you're waiting to, for that job to open up that you studied for and you prayed for and you believed for and you pr and prepared for. For some of you, it's with poor health. Living with a difficult situation. When's it going to get better for me? I wonder if it's ever going to get better for me right now. Our world is living, our hope is living between the coronavirus outbreak and the cure. And I believe it's in those um, in-between phases where fear is contagious. Where, 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 where we leave that gap of, oh, is this going to happen for me? And it's, it's, it's that hope that's wishy and it's washy and, and it invites fear. And it invites that feelings of failure. And it's in those times where fear is so contagious. But I heard someone say this week, yeah, fear is contagious, but so is faith, so is hope, and so is love. And, and it's our heart as a church community that we would still in the Jesus hope wherever you are right now, that your future is better than your past. You might be in a messy middle, but listen, the truth of the scriptures is God can use the messiest of circumstances and turn it into something incredible. He recycles our worst mistakes. And so I, I, I want to speak a message this morning that I've, I've called the butterfly effect. And I watched a film by, um, Ash, with Ashton Kutcher in the butterfly effect when I was a teenager and I always remember the saying but the butterfly effect is actually something in chaos something called chaos theory and, and the whole premise of it is is that when a very very small change with initial conditions creates a significantly different outcome like to, just to summarize it small changes create significant outcomes and, and, and it's our hope that the anticipation, our hope is the expectation that God right now is working behind the scenes. He's working behind the closed doors to renew this world, to renew his church. You see, small changes that we're making all across the world right now, in the conditions that we're in, many of us, that means in our home, they're going to create a significantly different outcome. It's the butterfly effect. You see, we're living in unprecedented circumstances. There's this national crisis, and here's the thing with national and actually international crises. They, they've got this way of causing so much anxiety in, in, in our hearts. They've got causing so much confusion or desperation and distraction, actually. And what it does, if you're a follower of Jesus, is it distracts you from your call to be a bringer of his kingdom and a builder of his church, a builder of his house, to actually build in our own thing. But I want to help us to reframe the understanding of what is happening and seeing right now that on a global scale, it is not a crisis. It's a chrysalis. You see, a crisis means that we have no idea what we're doing. There is no hope for the future. We're doomed. That's not what a chrysalis is. Right now, we're not in the middle of a crisis. We're in the middle of a chrysalis. A chrysalis is the in-between part for the caterpillar, caterpillar becoming the butterfly. 
It's the life stage where they undergo that transformation. You see, often it's in the messiest situations that we go through that actually are the prerequisite, are the prelude, are the preparation for everything that we're believing for in the future. The chrysalis is the life stage where they undergo that transformation. It's the period, the stage of becoming. And you've got to remember that it's that stage in becoming, that stage in between, that causes the biggest frustrations where we don't see the breakthrough and we don't see the things that we're believing for. And by faith, we've got to stand in faith, not in fear, and declare, I know that God is going to make it happen. See, the chrysalis looks like a crisis. For sure, it's chaos. It's, it, it's hectic. It's fearful. It's messy. But so is the chrysalis. Because when the caterpillar starts becoming a butterfly, the chrysalis, all it is, the chrysalis is this gooey mess. It's this lot goo. And I want to say that God is in the goo. What's happening right now, I believe the world is being realigned. I believe right now the church is being realigned. I believe right now, right now, that we're going to see the change of, of, of our future. We're going to see human history completely changed like we've never seen it happen before like we've ne- we're going to see the change of the world like we've never known it see the sickness of selfishness the individualism the people just doing their own thing with no regard about how it affects the marginalized or the poor or the broken or the hurting and i count myself as part of that group because every single one of us has got stuff in our life that we need to break through in stuff in our life we doubt about ourselves listen we doubt ourselves more than god does because when god looks at us he doesn't see a mess he sees a future God sees the future in the goo. He sees the good in the goo. See, we're seeing right now the sickness, the selfishness, the individualism, the crisis or the chrysalis is going to bring a new way of living. And I believe that as I was praying and as I was really seeking God about this is what we're seeing right now, this picture just keeps coming to me. The strange situation that we're in is a chrysalis. It is not the grave. It is not the end of the world. It's just the beginning of a new world. And as I think about the chrysalis, I wrote these two words down. Every time I think about it, these two words keep coming to mind. Renewal and healing. A few years ago, I married the woman of my dreams. Um, And hopefully she hears that because she's in the other room. But I married married Kira, my wife, and we we had an amazing wedding. We went to a beautiful little picturesque town in, in Croatia and... A few days after the wedding, we, we went to the port and a lot of our guests, a lot of our friends, we, we, we got a ferry over to Italy and we spent the day in Venice and just unbelievable city. And I was blown away just walking through and just seeing the amount of boats, the amount of traffic, the amount of people that are walking around Venice and on the boats. And I remember sitting down, we were having dinner at the side of the river and I just looked at the water and said, babe, that water is filthy. You know, it's so hot, you just wanted to jump in the water. But it was filthy, it was dirty. Uh, just recently on the news, they put a picture of the same byways, the same waterways that we were walking alongside. And they're saying that in, in, throughout history, they cannot remember, and there's no record, of the water in Venice being as crystal clear as it is right now. I've seen infographics, pictures, news reports on, on nature across the world. And what is happening is, as people are self-isolating, the world is self-healing. The world self-healing. And, and I believe right now, our world is healing. You, wherever you're watching this from, your families, your friends, or maybe you're on your own, it doesn't matter. You, you right now, regardless of what you feel, you are healing. You hear, because sometimes what we need to do is just press pause, give ourselves time to take a few breaths and restore. All right, we're being forced to slow down right now. We're being forced to do the things that actually we dreamed of doing once upon a time, having breakfast with our family, with our wife, with our husbands, our children. We, we actually pick, we got the opportunity to pick up the phone and to call people that we love the most. See, I don't think that anyone would have guessed a year ago that right now the world would have been on pause. Like, what was it that you thought you'd never have time to do? It, now is the best time. Now is the best time to start reinventing yourself and realign with God's plan for your life. And maybe it is that you used to avoid family. You used to do whatever you could to get out of the house because, you, you know, your spouse or your kids or your, whoever it is was just doing your head in. But right now, you've got a chance to reinvent yourself, to restore and start believing and dreaming for your family and for your friends and for your relationships. There's this video going on viral right now, it's an incredible video. There's this guy, he's playing his trumpet 
and he's playing this beautiful piece on, on, on his trumpet. He's on his balcony. The streets are completely empty, but the balconies are full of people. People go into the balconies to listen just to the beauty of this music that's being played. And I just want you to enjoy that piece of music right now. So we're going to carry on watching and the script and then the video is going to come up. How beautiful was that? See, hope is contagious. I'm seeing people, we are seeing people now come together like never before, like never before. Because self-isolation doesn't have to mean life isolation. See, when the, what the coronavirus really is revealing about humanity right now is, is revealing the depth of loneliness and isolation that there really is. You see, that's not happening now, that was already there. It's just being revealed. But what it's also revealing is our deep need and our deep connection for, for people. Like our, pre, our appreciation for people has just grown through the roof because we're in this place of restriction where we recognise our need for people. And we, we, we went for a walk the other day to get our daily dose of exercise. We went around a lake um, uh, just a few miles away from where we live and there's loads of people up. And, uh, you know, Key was doing the thing. Anytime someone was coming down or walking, she would veer off onto the dirt road to avoid them. You know, she's keeping the self-isolation thing. I was going past people and I just wanted to hug everybody because I'm like, people, like, where have you been? We've missed you guys so much. And, and I wouldn't have done that any other time. But what this is revealing with humanity is our need and our love for people. See, the world is renewing. The world's making small changes and it's creating significant outcomes. The world's renewing. We're in a chrysalis. You are a caterpillar. You're in a mess right now. Let me say, I'm speaking prophetically to you and your family. You're going to come out with wings. You're going to come out with fresh perspective. You're going to come out with this new appreciation and this renewed love for life. You see, no matter what challenges or trials or waiting that God has for you in this moment, your time living in the in-between will be more hope-filled than ever before when we grasp what really matters. I'm a nature nerd. I used to, uh, when I was younger, I used to uh, pretend to be David Attenborough. He's still a hero of mine. I think if I wasn't a church pastor, I'd be a conservationist or, or something like that. But I used to pretend to be David Attenborough. I'm like, everyone else like, I'm a teenage mutant hero turtle and I'm a, I'm a lion and... I'm, I'm, I'm Superman, I'm, like, I'm David Attenborough. And I used to pretend that I was on this TV show with David I, I, I used to, I grew up watching these nature programs and I remember watching something about the caterpillar and so I just want to nerd out for a moment. So if you bear with me for a few moments and let me be the nerd that I truly am. I want to speak about the chrysalis and I want to speak about the process of when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. You see, the chrysalis marks the end of the caterpillar's life. Once that sucker gets in that chrysalis, he ain't coming out. Bye-bye caterpillar. But what emerges is not the caterpillar and it's not the mess. It's new life. It's the butterfly. It begins as it attaches itself upside down to the twig. And you see, all the caterpillar used to do was consume and consume and consume and eat. Much like our world does now with no regard for the consequences or the messes it causes, it just consumes it. And, and what happens is that the caterpillar begins shedding its skin and in its place it grow, is this pupa or this chrysalis, which is like this gooey substance that's uh, sort of like encapsulated in this shell thing. And it's goo. And, 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 and inside that, goo, that, that chrysalis, it's mess and it's vulnerability 
and it's without structure. And I was thinking about this. I was thinking nobody likes goo and nobody likes mess and it doesn't look attractive, but God works miracles in the goo. God is in the goo. And I want you to listen to this for a moment. God never creates the mess. You know, God doesn't go around creating the issues. You know, sometimes we hear the arguments. Well, if God's real, why does, it, why does he create suffering? God never creates suffering. Why does God allow suffering? Hey, listen, God created free will. We created the mess we're in. What God does, and here's the beauty of it, God, God never creates the isolation. He never creates the mess. He never created the selfishness. He never created the depression. But God, in his purposes for our lives, get this, he uses the mess to create a message. And I believe that right now, what is happening in your life and in our world, God is using the mess of the world and he's turning it into something beautiful. Because what happens in the chrysalis is that the butterfly gets a completely new skeleton. So it's like the old skeleton would no longer be able to bear the weight and the function of what is now going to happen in the new season. See, there's going to be concepts that we're going, to, we're going to emerge from the chrysalis with new ideals, new concepts, new values. Uh, what, what happens in, this, in, in, in the chrysalis, is in the well-sealed chrysalis, the, the caterpillar, it, it, it stops feeding. Uh, it doesn't even appear to be alive anymore. Uh, and I know that through having conversations with so many people, people are like, they're, they're, where's life? Like, where, where, where's the things that we give our life to just zapped away in just a moment? But it's in this phase that the transformation is occurring. The caterpillar, you see, is being transformed into a butterfly. And it's through a process called metamorphosis. In the next stage, the butterfly emerges from the confinement of the chrysalis. It goes into the world. It's, got, it's wet. It's soft. Its wings are soft. It's vulnerable. And, and so before it flies, it's got to rest. Before it goes on and flies, it needs to allow its body to dry and its wings to harden and it to acclimatise itself to its new environment. And when it takes flight, that's where it, takes the, it, makes the, it lives the remainder of its lifespan in the sky. See, for a believer, for a Christian, life, I believe, begins at metamorphosis. That death to life in Christ circumstance. But it's also this ongoing process of transformation. You see, I don't know if you're watching and your, idea, your ideas about Christians is that they're these hypocrites, well-to-do people. Listen, I thank God that I'm transformed. I'm not the man I was. But I know I'm not going to be... I know I'll look back in the future and think, thank God I'm not that guy anymore. Because transformation is an ongoing thing from glory to glory where God makes us more like him. He creates us, he enlarges us, our capacity, our vision, our, our passion, so that we can sustain the things that he wants to give us in the future. Transformation's ongoing, and Paul in the Bible, he speaks really clearly about this. In, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, he says this, Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. The Greek word for transformed that Paul uses is the word metamorpho which is where we get our word metamorphosis. And I want you to understand the distinction that Paul's making right here. Being conformed, as in the reference to the world, is something that takes place from the outside in. Like he's talking about how the world has lived all the time being, being affected, living themselves, living from the outside in. That when any, whenever a tragedy happens, it affects my insides. Whenever someone hurts my... Whenever someone says something about me, it, it changes me in. So what he's saying is, is that so often what we did and what we did before we encountered Jesus Christ is that we lived according to what is happening around us and we lived from the outside in. We're at the mercy of circumstance. We're at the mercy of the current of culture. And yet being transformed, metamorphosis, is a change that only takes place from the inside out. And I sit in this time right now and, you know, I don't, I'm not fearful. I, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I am not fearful. I'm hopeful. I, I, I'm not panic buying toilet roll. Or a little bit. But that's just for convenience. I, w w there's no need for me to worry about what's going to happen in the future. Because listen, I've been transformed. I'm still on my journey. I ain't perfect. We don't have it together. 
But I'm telling you now what happens with transformation is I stop living, you stop living according to what is happening around you, and you start living according to what God says about you, about what God says to you about your circumstance. Paul goes on and he says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, being confident of this, he who began the good work in you will carry it on to completion. I remember hope is confident. It's the expectation. It's not doubtless wishing. Paul was saying, we're confident of this. If, if he started it, he'll finish it. Because just when the caterpillar thought that the world was over, it became a butterfly. We've heard from so many people over these past few weeks, been in touch with us online. Uh, we're, we're doubling up our efforts as a church community with connection and we're doing like Zoom calls for our Facebook and Facebook things. We're doing things for our life groups and our dinner parties. Whatever we can do to stay connected with people, we're going to do. But and through that, we've heard a few different stories of people. So many people fearful of the unknown. Uh, hardened men. Stories of hardened men. I was speaking to a friend the other day. Hardened men brought to tears because of the uncertainty of our world. But our hope, the hope of the gospel, is new life in Jesus Christ. Not living with the old, not living with fear of the future, not, 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 not living from the outside in, but moving forward in faith, hope and love. There's no mess that God can't, into, to, can't turn into something new. Like none. There's no sin. There's nothing that you've done. There's, there's absolutely nothing that we feel about ourselves, whether it's fear of failure, whether it's guilt or whether it's shame about things we've done or said or thought. Listen, there is nothing that can separate us from the, the love of God. That's what the Bible says. And that's why I'm hopeful about the future because you need to listen to me now. Your greatest days are ahead of you. They're not behind you. They're in front of you. And if you're living in fear about the unknown right now, if you're living with this uncertainty and whether you're a, uh, you'd say you, you're a Jesus follower or a Christian or not, whatever, whatever that looks like for you, I, I want us to just repeat this faith declaration together, all over living rooms, all over the UK and beyond. I want us to repeat this declaration together because it's my hope today that you, as you tune off, you're going to have your dinner with a bit of peace. You, you're going to enjoy your brew and your biggest worry for the rest of the day is going to be we've run out of sugar. And maybe that's a good thing. But listen, God's plan for you is unbelievable. Like, incredible. You, in fact, it is quite unbelievable. Because if you could see your, a glimpse of your future now, you'd think that's never going to happen. But listen, we can do anything through Christ Jesus. You're not on your own. You're not alone. And I want to encourage you, connect in. So let's, let's repeat this. Listen to this now. Come on, repeat after me. Because of Jesus... I know I know at this point there was a lot of tentative people. I'm not doing this, it's ridiculous. Get over yourself. Repeat after me right now. Because of Jesus, my future is secure. My future is hopeful. I will not fear the present. I will not fear the future. I will not run from the mess. I will trust that God always has the last word. My greatest days are ahead of me. Amen. And so I'm just so excited that you are even just saying that in faith. Faith is not feeling. You might have felt stupid saying it. Listen, you said it. You activated faith. As you activated faith, there's going to be something in your spirit that changes. But... I want, to, I want to give people an opportunity now and you might be watching, tuning in, watching this and thinking, what is this guy on about? I, I have no idea what all this even means to, uh, for me or what it looks like to me. All I know is I'm, I'm just, I'm scared. I, I, I don't have the hope that they're talking about. I want, to, I want to encourage you this morning that you can accept Jesus Christ into your life. We, we can do it over video. Like God is not, you don't live in a church. The Bible says that he's, he's present, he's everywhere. And just by tuning in right now, we can access his presence. And I want to I pray for you this morning. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. If you want to make a decision and invite Jesus Christ into your life, maybe it is that you've lived your life according to fear or people's expectations or living it from the outside in. Listen, you can emerge out of this 
chrysalis, not the crisis. You can get a fresh perspective about your future by surrendering it to Jesus this morning. And so there's a little icon above me with a, a little hand. I want you to click that if you're wanting to respond this morning. One of our moderators would love to have a little chat with you. Or if you're watching a rerun of this, I want to encourage you to get on our website and just email us, info at legacychurch.co.uk. Let us know that you've, you, you've made that decision because we want to come alongside you. And if that means picking up the phone call and helping you during this time or helping you getting connected into some of our Zoom calls, then we'd love to help you in any way we can but listen if you want to make that decision to follow Jesus this morning in your own heart you can say this or you can repeat after me it's up to you but I want you to repeat this in your heart dear Lord Jesus I invite you into my life this morning I surrender all of my shame I surrender all of my sin I surrender I ask for your forgiveness I give you everything from this day forward I walk by faith and not by fear. In Jesus' name, amen. And I just want to say, wherever you're watching from, I know there's people making that decision this morning. We don't take it lightly. And so we're going to have a bit of an awkward clap moment on our own. But we're just so thrilled and we're so excited for that decision that you've made. And this is a really exciting journey where we want to welcome you. We want to welcome you on. So bless you guys. Got a bit of a dry throat there but bless you guys um, we hope to see you on wednesday if you want to get involved in our virtual groups just jump in on that but let's just move forward this week in faith and not fear bless you speak to you soon okay that was an incredible word from matt that was so amazing and you know if you had a moment there and you just um, decided that you wanted to commit to this journey with Jesus and all we want you to do is just to let us know and it'll say at the bottom of the screen um, if you just click it where it says I raise my hand if you just click that that will it tell us and then we will be able to be praying for you this week Absolutely. throughout the week uh, and also if you feel you need prayer for anything if you go into the, the thing at the bottom of the screen you can let us know and we will be praying for you this week as well. Or if you want to join us for prayer. And if you want to join us for prayer, yes, because eight till eight, uh, every day we have different people praying. And if you are, want to be a part of that, please go onto our website, which is legacychurch.co.uk and you will go on there and you can just submit your times that you will be praying and that would be amazing. Don't forget, we'd love to have your home videos. Mm. It would be great if we could have all of the funnies, all of the shots. Yeah. And even if you see some memes out there that you're thinking, that's really funny, we want it to be appropriate, but if it's really funny, yeah. we'd love to see it. Because we want to we want to enlighten people's days. We want to yeah. make sure that there's a bit of fun about it and all yeah. the rest of it. Yeah. We have daily blogs going out. You can mm -hmm. see them on our Instagram, Facebook, and on our website. You can see all those at the top of the page. Yeah. And we just want to invite you on Wednesday, make sure you yes. sign in with us for yes. the life groups and the dinner parties. We've got yeah. Facebook Lives going on throughout the week and different things. Woo! There's lots of stuff happening. Yeah. It's all online. You can engage mm -hmm. with it. Climb on board. Yes. We would love to see you, to be part of our community. Yeah. We want to make sure that we are facilitating everything that God wants to do in this time. So I know we've done this a number of times already, but it's really important because we believe in prayer. Let's just pray right yeah. now as we yeah. wrap up. Father, yeah. we thank you that we can Jesus. meet in these days in this way what an incredible generation where we can sit in our homes and yet we can still be together yes and i pray that every person who are uh, in isolation for whatever reason whether they're well or whether they're not we pray you bless them you'd undertake for them you would do good for them and you would be with them help each one of us to live the way that you want us to live because we really believe the best is yet to come yeah. amen Amen. God bless See you, you guys. Next week, guys. Have a fantastic Love you. week. Bless you. All the best.